And it was, uh, in some ways, it was, you know, I've, I've read accounts of near death experiences, and it was, in some ways, it's similar to that, although I was still, I had no sense of being dead, I was still sort of um, rooted in my body. But I remember waking up for no reason at three o'clock in the morning. And obviously, I should have felt terrible after a night drinking, but I felt this incredible serenity, the most peaceful feeling I've ever felt in my life. It was just this amazing, deep, radiant serenity filled my whole being. And then I realised, first of all, I was aware of it in myself, but then I realised that it wasn't just in me, it was everywhere. It filled the whole universe. So I felt that the whole universe was filled with this amazing radiance, this bliss. And there was a real sense of this is the essence of reality. This bliss, this radiance, is the basic essence of all reality of the universe. Mm. I was aware of it stretching endlessly into space, you know, into infinity. And it filled my being, it filled the whole universe. And again, there was this sense that there was no separation, that this energy was my basic essence too. It was also the essence of everything which exists. So to, to take again the subtitle of your book, it says, Why Awakening Experiences Occur. So why do they occur, do you think? Well, there are two... Well, I suggest in the book there are two different types of awakening experiences which have two different sources. And the first source is... Um, I call it homeostasis disruption. It, it comes when... If a person disrupts the physiology of their body to some to quite, quite a powerful degree then there's a chance if they do this in the context of a religious ritual or ceremony or spiritual tradition, there's a chance it will lead to a high state of consciousness. So that's why throughout history people have fasted, uh, they've um, undergone sleep deprivation, uh, they've taken psychedelic drugs, they've, they've used breathing exercises. So if you disrupt the physiology in this way, you, in some way the normal homeostasis of the body seems to be related to ordinary consciousness. They sort of move together. So that when you disrupt homeostasis, you also disrupt ordinary consciousness. And that means that there's a chance that you can switch to a higher state of consciousness. So that's one, that's one way in which higher states of consciousness can occur. But the second way is a more sort of organic, natural, and in some ways more reliable, more sensible way of going about, uh, of um, attaining awakening experiences. And that's through um, what I call an intensification of life energy. So there, there are lots of situations when we become very relaxed, when we shut down our senses to the external world, and we stop concentrating, we stop being busy, we stop perceiving lots of sights and sounds around us. And most importantly, the, um, the mind becomes quiet too. Once the, I think that's probably the main factor in these experiences, that the mind, the normal chatter of the ego, fades away. And therefore, at the same time, the ego as a structure becomes much less strong, much less powerful. And suddenly there's this... Because the normal channels through which we give our energy away are, are being closed or reduced, there's a build-up of life energy in our being, um, and that can lead to an awakening experience. So that can happen through meditation. That's the probably the most reliable way of achieving this state, through meditation. When we make a conscious attempt to, to quieten the mind and to become still within ourselves. But in the book, uh, you know, I'm... I spent quite a lot of time collecting examples of awakening experiences. I used my own experiences and experiences from other people. And I found that they could come from a variety of different sources, like nature's a big one. You know, a lot of people have these experiences when they're alone in nature. Well, not necessarily alone, but usually alone in nature, when the stillness and beauty of nature quietens their minds and they become very relaxed and still inside. And also music as well, listening to music is quite a big one, and also playing music. Dancing is quite a powerful one as well. Sex, you know, many awakening experiences occur during sex. But it could be really any situation where we become still and relaxed and our minds become quiet and therefore there's this build-up of life energy within our being. But we can also do all those things and still nothing happens too. There's no guarantee, is there? <clears throat> there's no guarantee, but there's a, a stronger likelihood that they will occur. I mean, sometimes awakening experiences appear to happen for no reason like this experience I've talked about when I was in Germany and I woke up in three o'clock three o'clock yeah. in the morning I couldn't really tell you the reason why that happened it seemed to just happen spontaneously so sometimes they do happen spontaneously but these these are what I've talked about definitely the conditions which make them more likely to occur and once from your research and your experiences once awakening experience happens there's obviously a taste of something 
what are the factors for people to turn that into something permanent so they're living from an awakened state <clears throat> right well in terms of the uh, the first type of awakening experience as i mentioned the the ones that come through homeostasis disruption so a lot of people have had those experiences through psychedelic drugs for example and you know th so there are some cases of when people have awakening experiences through psychedelics they they realize that there is another reality that they realize that they have been asleep and that they've temporarily been in contact with a more intense more complete reality so that can that can be a life-changing event that leads them to investigate other forms of transformational practices like meditation yoga i mean ram das is a good example of that he was a, a person who um who experimented with psychedelics and but he realized that that's wasn't that's not really a route to permanent awakening so he turned to more it's like a taste somehow. it's a taste yeah but obviously if you if you view that as a, a route to permanent awakening it's quite dangerous and you're likely to suffer some psychological problems in the end as a result so someone like Ram Dass turned towards more reliable more organic natural conscious changing practices such as meditation and yoga but I think one of the problems which people have which I found quite a lot I mean since my books come out quite a few people have written to me and said um, you know I've been having these experiences for years but I've never talked about them to anybody because I didn't understand them so they they felt very relieved that they've been able to relate to other people's experiences and understand that. Well, a lot of people they go to the doctor and the doctor gives them tranquilizers, or they even, in some cases, end up in a mental hospital, don't they? Yeah, of course. Yeah, that's because obviously we we don't live in a culture which supports spiritual awakening. You know, we live in a culture which, if anything, you know, denies spiritual awakening. So, I think for some people, it takes them a while to understand what's happened to them you know they're aware that they feel something very positive and powerful but you know they need a framework which enables them to understand these experiences because it can be unsettling can't it for people if you don't know what it is yeah you know even though it's a very powerful wonderful positive experience it can be yeah it can be like a, a bolt out of the blue you know that disrupts your normal vision of the world you know your normal experience of the world so at the same time you can feel a bit threatened by it as well yeah, it's funny, This uh, every now and again I get reminded of this guy called John Wren Lewis and I have talked about him before on Conscious TV and just very briefly, he was, uh, I say was because he's dead now, he's an English guy and he um, was travelling in Thailand with his wife and his daughter and basically he, um, apparently in Thailand at that time people used to give you poison sweets mm -hmm. hoping you go unconscious so they can steal your wallet or maybe your luggage or whatever and so someone gave him a sweet he took this poison sweet and he did go unconscious mm -hmm. now they also gave one to his wife she didn't feel good about it she didn't take it anyway John basically goes unconscious he <clears> ends <throat> up in the hospital and then he dies fortunately his wife gets him to the hospital okay and then when he wakes up everything is completely different and what's happened to him is that he has this he's in his awakened state and it's just happened through whatever mm. process that happened in terms of his consciousness or chemicals in the brain or whatever it is mm -hmm. it just happened and he didn't really want to be in that state his wife was searching for consciousness but he was just didn't, didn't want to know about the whole thing and there it was facing him and he couldn't get out of it yeah and that's the amazing yeah. thing it mm -hmm. was just so palpable so tangible mm -hmm. and there's a whole book written but apparently there's a some kind of dispute so it hasn't come out yet it's a, right. I've read the book, it's a great book mm -hmm. um, but that, that reminds me of that it can be random, you can do nothing and this <clears throat> force strikes you mm. and you are back, not back, but you mm -hmm. are in the truth or in beingness or whatever, oneness, whatever you call mm -hmm. it in true nature yeah. you're never changing as many words for it yeah, I and mean, I think there are, there are many more awaken people around them we realize because there are many people who've woken up often due to turmoil and trauma a great deal of turmoil and trauma in your life can be a trigger to this permanent shift into an awakened state but unless a person which is quite rare quite rare comes from a you know a spiritual culture a spiritual background they won't understand what's happened to them and i've met a lot of people who say you know i've never talked about this before because i'm afraid that people are going to think i'm completely mad and I used to think it was completely mad too. Yeah.